So we're now going to move on to look at uh, the factors that underlie peak number or the number of peaks in a diffraction pattern. We've so far looked at peak position and how this is determined by unit cell shape and size and peak intensity and how this had a, a wide number of uh, parameters that fed into it, form factors, the volume fraction of a given phase and so on. But what about the number of peaks in a diffraction pattern? Well, as a general rule, uh, if a phase has higher symmetry, it will have a simpler diffraction pattern, so fewer lines. Uh, so if you take the example of a cubic pattern, uh, collect it over a certain range, you might get 10 peaks. For a monoclinic phase, collect the diffraction pattern over the same range, you might have 100 peaks of much weaker intensity. So the reason for this is peak overlap. Um, cubic materials have simpler patterns because of this peak overlap. And the number of peaks that overlap as a result of the crystal symmetry is called the multiplicity or peak multiplicity. So if we imagine uh, an H00 type reflection, well for a cubic system, this is gonna have a multiplicity of six. The H00, bar H00, zero, zero K0, zero, zero bar K0, zero, zero, zero L, and zero, zero bar L lines are all equivalent, they all overlap. And so when we look at uh, a cubic phase, with XRD, we only see a single H00 reflection. If we look at a tetragonal system, we now have uh, the A and B lattice parameters still equal, but the C lattice parameter has become stretched or compressed, so it's no longer equal to A and B. Therefore, the result of this is that the H00 type reflections now have a multiplicity of four. So the H00 bar H00, 0K0, and 0 bar K0 are all equivalent, but the 0, 0 L type reflections are not equivalent to those anymore. They have a, a multiplicity of 2, so we have the 0, 0 L and the 0, 0 bar L reflections being equivalent. What that means is that when we look at the diffraction pattern for a tetragonal phase, we would see two lines instead of one. We would see a, a 0, 0 L and an H00 0, 0 in our diffraction pattern. For an orthorhombic system, it gets more complex again. We now have A, B, and C lattice parameters that are all different. And so now our H00, 0K0, and 00L type reflections all have a multiplicity of two. And that means if we were to look at the diffraction pattern uh, from an orthorhombic phase, we would see three peaks in the diffraction pattern. Instead of one, we would see an H00, a 0K0, and a 00L line now in our diffraction pattern. A good way to demonstrate this is to take the uh, diffraction patterns from two polymorphs of barium titanate. Uh, you can see at the bottom on the right, we've got the uh, 112 reflection from the cubic phase. Um, and then if we go to the red pattern, uh, we can see for the tetragonal, now A equals B but doesn't equal C in terms of the lattice parameters, we see a big 121 peak which has double the intensity of the 112 reflection. And so you can see here the multiplicities um, and the effect that they're having. So the, uh, effectively with the 112, we have six peaks overlapping. Um, and with the 121 and the tetragonal, um, we have four peaks overlapping. And the 112 in the tetragonal has two peaks overlapping. So we have this one to two ratio. And you can see also uh, the peak intensities are lower as well. We looked at, in a previous video, um, this equation for um, the, the intensity of a diffracted beam. And you can see the term I've outlined here for the multiplicity. So this is built in to the, the formulas and for the peak intensity. And it really does highlight the impact that it has here. And you can see very clearly the 112 in the cubic phase is very intense. And as we've moved to lower symmetry, um, so we've gone to the tetragonal system, we've got two peaks, both of which are lower intensity than we would see for a cubic phase. And we can see the, the ratio, the, the doubler there, one to two. So you can imagine if we went to a monoclinic phase or a triclinic phase, something with a lot less symmetry, a lot lower symmetry, uh, we would suddenly have um, a lot more peaks um, because the peak overlap would be much reduced in those systems. And so we've, that also explains why if you're looking at something that's monoclinic or triclinic, um, you're going to have to maybe run for a lot longer to get similar intensities as you would if you had a nice cubic material. Okay, another example we can look at is um, the role of this in order disorder transitions as exhibited by these, uh, for example, cobalt oxide um, 
uh, lithium cobalt oxide and lithium manganate phases that we see here. So cobalt oxide has a simple basic face center cubic rock salt structure um, and you can see the diffraction pattern for that in black. We only see two peaks, a very simple pattern because it's cubic um, and so it's all very straightforward. In lithium cobalt oxide, lithium and cobalt cations occupy layers of alternate uh, octahedral sites within the uh, oxide array and this cation ordering gives a larger unit cell which is rhombohedral. We get extra lines appearing in the diffraction pattern as you can see here in red. The lines corresponding to the rock salt subcell are still present but appear at higher 2 theta, um, lower D spacing, since uh, the, uh, there's a contraction in the interatomic distances. Um, also you can see the HKL indices are, are different um, because the, the structure is different and the unit cell is different. In the lithium manganate, Li2MnO3, we can see the uh, diffraction pattern here in green. Uh, this again is a layered structure, but we now have fully occupied lithium layers alternating with layers which contain a mixture of lithium and manganese, and these are ordered uh, as you go through the structure. So the structure is now monoclinic, and again we can see we've got extra reflections as a result of the reduced peak overlap. We still get um, the uh, basic subcell peaks for the cubic rock salt structure, but again, as in the lithium cobalt oxide, they're shifted to a higher angle. Um, and then we see a lot of extra reflections because of the reduction in symmetry and peak overlap. So hopefully this has given you a, an idea for why we see um, the diffraction patterns that we do, why we have the number of peaks or lines in diffraction patterns that we do.